This is Tales from the Pros, where business leaders and influencers share their stories of inspiration, struggles, and successes. And I'm your host, Michael Giorgio. Welcome to Tales from the Pros. This is Michael Giorgio, your host and co-founder of Imagine Ovation. My wonderful guest with me here today has done it all in business. Going from extreme millionaire success down to insane struggle and back to success aimed with purpose. He is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and built a platform that uses four vital principles, gratitude, empathy, accountability, and effective communication. And these principles have allowed him to communicate and mentor everyone from college students to C-suite executives. He is a serial entrepreneur, world-class keynote speaker, storyteller, empathetic, authentic, and inspirational thought leader, consistently serving and empowering others on how to be truly happy. Meet the man behind the story of the real Jerry Maguire. Please welcome the awesome David Meltzer. David, it's an honor having you here today, man. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, I'm so excited to be here and hopefully share some lessons and stories and have some fun. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is, this is awesome. Thank you so much. So you know, uh, David, I, I know you know about uh, storytelling. I always watch a lot of your stories on LinkedIn. I'm a huge fan. I've been watching you for for, for years now. Uh, and I really consider you one of those like online mentors. And I probably actually need to have you as a mentor in, in my life and in my career. But, you know, when it comes to stories, I know they're very impactful and inspiring. So I know you've been through a lot in your life from, you know, success and, and you know, struggle and back to success again many times. So can you give us a little bit insight into just your story and how you got to where you are right now? Sure. My story really revolves around money, uh, which is an energy, a currency, an object of energy that we put into the flow to get what we want. And the reason that money is really the theme of the story is that I had none when I grew up. I had a single mom with six kids who packed my dinner in a country squire station wagon and worked two jobs and forced upon us not only Jewish guilt, but the ideas like doctor, lawyer, failure, uh, you know, the fetus wasn't fully developed till after graduate school. So extraordinary pressure for academics. But my father, who had left when I was five, was an entrepreneur. And I decided that I would distinguish myself in two ways uh, with these hyper intellectual, extremely good, kind, wonderful siblings of mine, that I would distinguish myself, number one, by being a professional athlete, Uh, which I later learned I had no talent for, no quantum DNA for. Uh, But the other one was I was going to be rich. I was going to distinguish myself by buying my mom a house and a car because the only time I wasn't happy as a child was when I'd catch my mom frustrated with finances. So my directive from five years old and on was simply money would buy me happiness, money would buy me love. And that's where my focus, my attention plus my intention to create the coincidences I wanted. And, you know, as I learned, I got a scholarship to play football in college. I wasn't good enough to do that. All my attention went to being on rich. Uh, And the only reason, you know, I wanted to play football to get rich was that I could have graduated summa cum laude from Harvard, uh, as my younger brother did, and been one of five or six people in my family to do so. Just making a high school football team made me the Michael Jordan, the LeBron James, you know, the the, the best football player ever in my family. Uh, and as a middle child, distinguishing myself was very important. Anyway, I graduated law school. I have two job offers. One, to be an oil and gas litigator, which is the reason I went to law school, the highest paying job you can get out of law school, oil and gas litigator. But I also got a sales job. And the only reason I got the sales job offer was that because my focus was on being rich, I was open to do anything. I would have shoveled shit with my hand six days a week for 12 hours a day if it paid enough. I didn't really care what it was. I wanted to be rich and I wanted to buy my mom a house and a car and distinguish myself. And lo and behold, beyond my mom's advice, because she told me that the internet was a fraud, it was a fad, and I'd lose all my money and I'd waste my time, I ended up making a million dollars nine months out of law school, buying my mom a house and a car. And from that point on, every single thing in my life until 2006, re totally engineered and reaffirmed one thing, money buys love and happiness. So all the way from five until 36 years old, for 31, more than half my life, everything reaffirmed money buys love and happiness. But of course, uh, if you wanna make God laugh, come up with a great plan. And uh, my plan uh, soon became 
thwarted because my values were lost. I surrounded myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. And I learned some valuable lessons, especially about pain, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial pain, that instead of being a stop sign, it was to me an indicator, an indicator that I had lessons to learn uh, and that was pushing me in a better direction, a better place. And those lessons have uh, resulted in some great stories, as you suggest, because I think people love to learn lessons through stories. No, I love it, man. I mean, I mean I'll tell you this, David, like from, from watching you for so long, I mean, when you talk to your audience, and I know you have, uh, you know, I'm sure you have your videographer that's following you, right, and, and filming you in your different, uh, you know, different places that you're visiting and speaking opportunities and all that stuff. Uh, you're very, uh, it, it just seems like when you talk, it's very honest, very real, authentic. Sometimes I come across people, especially in social media, where it's just not, it's, it's not as vulnerable. I know you embrace a lot of your vulnerabil vulnerability a lot. Um, and that it connects you with your audience. It's connected with me. And when I watch you, I'm just like, man, I have a lot of similarities to this guy. This guy's been through a lot and, you know, he just never gave up and he, he got back to success again. And, you know, and, and I know you talk about serving others a lot. And that's what I really want to get into is like, what does it really mean to serve others and provide value? Cause I know it's talked about all over the place. So, if you can, like, talk, talk to us about that. Sure. I've shifted uh, the paradigm of giving uh, because I myself had always been a giver. I would give to receive. I always negotiated trade anything I could. The more that I gave, the more I received. And then I shifted the paradigm to understand that I live not in a world of not enough where you do give to receive. If there's not enough, then when you give, you should get something back. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people that live in the world are not enough are victims. Everything is why me? Why do they have that? Why did right? And then when I became a millionaire, I moved to the world of just enough, which is still a scarce world, uh, just enough for me, uh, still trading, giving to receive just for me. And there was just enough for me. And so I went from being a victim to buying things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. Uh, you know, it was an incredible world of I never had enough. And so I would give more to get more. I would give to you know a temple or a, a community so I could see my name up there. And if people tell you how philanthropic and wonderful and humanitarian you are, but then I entered the world by shifting the paradigm simply by saying, you know what? From now on, I am going to receive and allow it to come through me with faith that there's more than enough. Everything, I'm going to receive more than enough through me to give more than enough to others with nothing in expectations, judgments, or conditions, nothing in return, no trades, negotiations involved at all. But simply, my focus was to take inventory of my values, personal, experiential, giving, and receiving, and figure out my what. And I was going to receive my what by asking for help mainly to find the people that have my what and ask them for it or teach me how to get my what, and then allow it to come through me with appreciation. Now, appreciation is a duality. The number one thing about appreciation, it's gratitude. So I'd allow it to come through me with the light, the love, and the lessons that I received it with. But also, appreciation means to add value. If your house appreciates, it goes up in value. So I would add my own knowledge, my own skills, my own desire and intention to what I had received and give it all away with faith that it would also allow me to receive more. And I know you operate on the, uh, the 120 rule, right? You want to talk about that too? <laughs> yeah, so I have two rules. Uh, one is the uh, it's the hundred twenty rule, and that says that in when I uh, give, I want to give more value than I receive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm always not only looking quantifiably, you know, hey, here's a hundred dollar bill. Would you give me twenty dollars back? Does that sound fair? Can you see any reason you won't want to move forward? Uh, but I also want to carry the energy about me. Right. One of the things you talked about was my authenticity the way that people connect to me. Well, that's right. because I'm true to my frequency. So people that are on my channel are going to know that that's the true frequency. If I'm trying to please everyone, it's not going to resonate with you. It's going to create interference like a radio station that has static on it. It doesn't make sense to us. But yeah. when you tell who you are and the mistakes that you've made, the dummy tax you paid, the experience and stories that you have, and you resonate with people, that you're supposed to resonate. Does, does it resonate? Some people aren't even aware of me because the frequency is so far away from their channel, right? They're not aware of me. They, even if I was standing in front of them, they wouldn't understand what I say. 
you know, they, they, I have someone that did a book review and all they could think about with connected to goodness was this guy thinks that you can talk to water and turn it brown. This is the biggest BS book I've ever read. I said, is that really what my book is about? No, you're just on a different frequency. And I actually was alluding to a movie that I saw and agreeing with something that I saw in the movie Blink. And I still believe that you can carry negative energy and turn water into dirty, disgusting water if you keep talking negatively to it. And I think you can clear water as well as grow plants by speaking positively. I've seen it in movies, that's what I believe, but that's not what Connected to Goodness is about. Connected to Goodness is about is taking your possibilities, making them a probability using inspiration, and then taking your probabilities through pragmatic behavior, discipline, strategy, and awareness to materialize what you want. But that's a great example of someone not being on my frequency and me being okay with it. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing because we have a huge opportunity on social media, especially to build communities if we stay true to who we are. And don't be afraid of being a hypocrite. I change my mind all the time. Why? Yeah. Because I'm, constantly, <laughs> I'm looking for lessons, you know, I, and I'll share the lessons with people and I'll share with them the lessons I've learned and tell them about how when I was 30 years old, my dad gave me a jacket. And I thought I knew everything and I thought my dad knew nothing. And I hated him because he was a liar, a cheater, manipulator, overseller, back end seller at 30. And I myself at 36 found out, which saved my life, that I was the liar, the cheater, the manipulator, overseller, and back end seller. And my dad had already learned the lessons that money doesn't buy love or happiness. And my dad was trying to teach me that lesson, but I wasn't ready to hear it. My frequency wasn't the same as my father's. His was high and his was frequency was true to him and I was still trying to figure it out which was fine and when did you learn all of this like when did you change your frequency was this the time when you felt like you were restarting your life is that is this when you really went you, you lost almost everything and is, is that when it just hit you you're like I need to I need to change the way I think the way I operate uh you know the way I act I think three things raised my awareness to changing my frequency. The first I didn't listen to, that was when my dad gave me a jacket with no pockets after 20 years, a birthday present, to remind me I couldn't take anything with me when I was gone, to remind me that money doesn't buy love or happiness. Mm -hmm. And I gave him complete resistance and anger in return. I thought he was punishing me. But in 2006, two years before I lost everything, uh, my best friend Rob, who actually I'd known so long that in sixth grade camp, he had asked my wife, my wife today, uh, to go steady for me. And he embarrassed me and because she said, no, tell him to ask me himself. And he yelled out, dude, she said no. And so I threw an egg at my wife because uh, she embarrassed me. Uh, but Rob, I took golfing and I was running Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, most notable sports agency in the world. They made the movie Jerry Maguire about Lee. I was CEO of the firm. And at that time, I invited uh, Rob to go to the Masters with me. And he didn't want to go. He didn't want to surround himself. He said he didn't like me or the people I hung out with or the, the things we were doing. And it crushed me because yeah. I told him, I go, Rob, I'm not doing those things. He said, Dave, you can lie to me, but don't lie to yourself. But two weeks after that's where my life really changed. It was an aggregate of my dad giving me a warning sign, right? And that is planting a seed. I always say we plant seeds under trees we may never sit under. Even though I didn't listen to my dad, he planted a seed that kept growing over six years. And then Rob planted and watered the seed when he wouldn't go to the masters with me. And then my wife chopped it down because my wife, when I came home 5.30 in the morning after lying to her and going to the Grammy Awards with Little John the rapper, <laughs> waste, wasted out of my mind, told me for the first time, she wasn't happy and I better take stock in who I was and who I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. uh, as angry as I was and wasn't ready to hear it, by the next day when I was ready to get divorced and couldn't believe how ingrateful she was and how mm -hmm. disappointed or offended I was, I looked over and I saw that jacket. And that's where it all hit me. I was the liar, the cheater, the manipulator, overseller, back end seller. And more importantly, I wasn't happy. I was living in a world of just enough for me. I wasn't a victim anymore like when I lived in Akron, Ohio. Nothing was happening to me. I was never saying, why me anymore? But I was living in a world of just for me, buying things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like, a complete, empty, shallow, disappointing existence that was materialized and, and, and really subjected to a, a value that wasn't a high vibration. And I wanted to make a change. And so I started living, as you stated at the beginning of this interview, 
by gratitude, finding the light, the love, and the lessons, giving me perspective, no matter what the external circumstances are. Forgiveness, which I definitely needed to forgive myself so I could forgive others, to give myself peace in my life. Accountability, simply no matter what, to ask myself, what did I do to attract this to myself and what am I supposed to learn from it? Once again, finding the light, the love, and the lessons and everything. And then understanding the three worlds of inspiration. Understanding that it wasn't just connecting to people and inspiring and motivating them or effectively communicating with them. But the most important connection, which I was ignoring, was that I at all times was connected to the greatest source of love, light and lessons. That at all times I was connected to abundance, to more than enough. And it was my job to access that, to lessen the corrosion and interference, the shortages, the voids, and the obstacles that I create through ego-based emotion, through ego-based consciousness, the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, worried, guilty. All of these things, all they do is corrode this power that we're always connected to. And then it makes it difficult to appreciate it with gratitude and adding our values and give it away. But once I got that all figured out, those four things, and for 14, almost 15 years now, practice that and continue to practice it, knowing that it's progress, not perfection, that's where this inspiration expansion and the results really start coming. When you understand acceleration, growth, and segmentation, it grows at such a rate and pace that we can go ahead and take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And isn't it crazy how uh, we create a lot of our own resistance in life? Oh. All of it. It's just so much. It's uh, I'm learning that a lot th throughout my life. I mean, my my fiance is uh she's a um she does she performs Reiki, so she's very energetic, very intuitive. Yep. So I've learned a lot from that, and and just you know being on the right frequency, changing perspective, uh you know employing a lot of, a lot more gratitude and just appreciating where you are today and knowing that struggle uh, is going to be a part of the process. You just got to keep moving forward and 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 live for something bigger than yourself. I think is vital in life, right? And I know you do that. Yeah, I think that lesson about pain, right? Being an indicator, not a stop sign. Most people see pain as the stop sign. They feel it, they stop. To me, it's an indicator that I have a lesson to learn, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial pain. I just have a lesson to learn and I'm happy where I'm at with that pain, but I'm striving for something better and I have faith that I'm gonna end up somewhere better than that. Yeah, and I know David, you talk a lot about um, happiness, which I love. And what does it really mean especially now in this crazy world, lots going on, it, it's insane. But how do, how do we know that we're, we're happy or we're not happy? Or how, well, you get that question a lot, but how do you really find happiness in your life? What did, what did you do? Because yeah. I, I do see you as a happy guy, but that's all I, that's from what I see. I'm born, I'm born with the happiness genes. Yeah. That, that helps as well. Just like, you know, I see you as a great basketball player. Well, I was born with these skills. Uh, this quantum memory, but more importantly, it's mindset, heart set, and pragmatic living of thinking, saying, doing, and believing all the right things. Uh, in its essence, it's focusing in on enjoying the consistent every day, mm -hmm. persistent without quit pursuit of your potential, your own potential, whatever that may be and what you want. And in order to do that, there's five daily activities uh, that you really have to understand. One is taking inventory of your values so you know your what. Two is asking not only of how you can be of service or value, but asking for help. Three, utilize the mathematical equation of luck, attention plus intention equals coincidence by studying what you have planned, what you don't have planned in your sleep and your calendar, right? And then using a a kaleidoscope, I call it the Meltzer kaleidoscope because I got to throw a little ego in there. A lens of productivity of how much value are you providing with what you have planned on that plan of sleep. Accessibility, how accessible are you to others and the great source of light, love, and lessons. And how are you accessing what you want? And then finally, the lens of gratitude, which we can't talk about too much, which is the ability to find the light, love, and lessons in the suck. You know, I always say what makes people happy is they can find the light, love, and lessons in the suck, and everyone has the same percentage of suck in their life. It's just who and at what percentage and speed can find the light, the love, and the lessons in what sucks about their life. And then finally, most importantly, is the practice of ending fear, which is a four-step procedure of one, identifying what the primary and secondary fears that you 
to have. I listed them out at a very rapid rate. Everyone has them. It's taken me almost 15 years to come up and be able to say, you know, you need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, worried, guilty, resentful, offended, right? But you need to, one, identify and create your own list. Two, you need to stop. It takes a ferocious Buddha to stop and then breathe to get back to center, to neutrality, to your baseline, which you hopefully can find through some of the energy work or meditation or other things that I do. And then most importantly, ferociously roll in the right direction. You know, when ego is in play, your mind, body, and soul are on fire. Everyone knows when you're on fire, stop, drop, and roll. If you do those five daily practices under the context of gratitude, empathy, accountability, effective communication, and enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, I promise you, you're well on your way in the practice of being happy. And happiness is the greatest virus of all time. Spread by witnessing it as we prove by this podcast, it actually strengthens you emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, but it also strengthens your immune system. So if you're at all afraid of what's going on today, protect yourself with happiness. And I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy for this mm -hmm. very reason. And I know, I know just the way you operate, uh, David, and, and who you are, and I, I know how you coach and mentor people um, this is the advice that you give really helps them on a sales and marketing perspective, right? It's you're helping them to connect with others. And uh, I mean, I can just tell that's, that's so important. Yeah. And it, cause it is money, money doesn't buy happiness, you oh. know, inclusion, but what it does do, it is a currency and blended with the other currency, the object of energy that you put into the flow to get what you want, meaning faith money will allow you to shop. And if you shop for the right things, if you shop for the right things, the things like community centers and uh, you know, curing childhood cancer, helping your parents, honoring your community, honoring your family and friends, when you spend your money in the right way, I promise you it does buy happiness because it allows you to shop for, for what makes you happy. Yeah, awesome, Dave. Well, last question I have for you, I always ask this to everyone is, how would you or how do you define your story in one word? In one word. Kindness. Kindness. Love it. Everyone has this different word. I've heard some crazy words, but I love it. Um, so David, where can, uh, where can everyone find you? I do free trainings every Friday. The replay, that's 11 a.m. Pacific. The replays are featured on Spotify. They're featured on Entrepreneur. I have a top podcast called The Playbook. So find me, email me directly. If you want exercises, guides, my books for free david at dmeltzer.com. And then I have a text community to join so we all can help each other. 949-298-2905. Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yes, be happy. Be, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thank you, everyone. So good. Thank you, David. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. I'm humble. Thank you. Thanks. I'm humble. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for listening to this. I really appreciate it. And this is Michael Giorgio, your host on Tales from the Pros. And until next time, thank you, guys. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and also follow our social media. Uh, there are links somewhere around here. But uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support. And I'm going to be giving you awesome content continuously. And we look forward to seeing you soon.